How's it going, people? Well, how about a little more of that gold book? Because I had a tough day today, and I need to unwind a bit. But I made it. That's the important part. Got a lot done, too. <clears throat> now it's old chub time. Well, chapter 12 doesn't look very thirsty, but it's a little thirsty. I'll take it. The prophet Ether and King Coriantumr, the Jaredite and Nephite languages. God gives weaknesses that men may be humble. You know, if he just visited once in a while, we'd be nice and humble. I mean, he's almighty, right? That would do it. But instead, he just stays absent, appears to be non-existent, and gives us weaknesses and sicknesses to keep us humble. He's obviously much smarter than us. That sounds stupid to one of us, but <laughs> not to me. But um, it's a, probably a brilliant plan. Moroni's farewell to the Gentiles. That's pretty neat because there's really no Gentiles in the land of promise. I mean, the Lamanites are Indians that used to be Hebrews, so they're Semitic. That's it. Why is he saying goodbye to the Gentiles? There are none there. Must be doing it in writing. He's all alone, getting weird. All right. One. And it came to pass. <clears throat> Mother's milk. That's the way I remember it. That the days of Ether were in the days of Coriantumr. What a coincidence. And worth noting in a gold book. And Coriantumr was king over all the land. Two. And Ether was a prophet of the Lord. So we got like a king and a wizard. Like Merlin and Arthur all over again. Uh, yeah. Wherefore, Ether came forth in the days of Coriantumr and began to prophesy unto the people, for he could not be restrained because of the Spirit of the Lord which was in him. 3. For he did cry uh, from, the, from the morning even until the going down of the sun exhorting the people to believe in God unto repentance, lest they should be destroyed, saying unto them that by faith all things are fulfilled. For, wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world. Yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which is going to be pretty damn crowded, don't you think? What are you going to do? I'll sit on JC's lap? <laughs> a lot of people. <sighs> which hope cometh of faith? I thought they're the same thing. Uh, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, because we all need to be anchored which would make them sure and steadfast and weighed down. Always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. Five. And it came to pass. Oh. 
Ether did prophecy great and marvelous things unto the people, which they did not believe, because they saw them not. 6. And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning these things. I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore dispute not, because ye see not, for ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. Yeah, hey, buy this without, uh, buy this unseen. It's, there's a bridge, really. You gotta buy a bridge. It's a Scientology bridge, though. Okay. So basically, this is just a paraphrase of Hebrews 11, 1. Or that whole Hebrews 11. <sighs> Seven. For it was by faith. That's the same language Paul was using, if that was Paul writing back then, in Hebrews. For it was by faith that Christ showed himself unto our fathers, after he had risen from the dead, and he showed not himself unto them until after they had faith in him. They had to put on their Bible glasses. Wherefore, it must needs be that some had faith in him, for he showed himself not unto the world. Eight, but because of the faith of men, he has shown himself unto the world and glorified the name of the Father and prepared a way that thereby, thereby others might be partakers of the heavenly gift that they might hope for those things which they have not seen, because they're magical. Yeah. Nine. Wherefore, ye may also have hope and be partakers of the gift, if ye will but have faith. Ten. Behold, it was by faith that they of old were called after the holy order of God. 11. Wherefore, by faith was the law of Moses given. But in the gift of his Son hath God prepared a more excellent way. And it is by faith that it hath been fulfilled. 12. For if there be no faith among the children of men, God can do no miracles among them. Huh. Wherefore he showed not himself until after their faith. 13. Behold, it was the faith of Alma. And Amulak, oh, those guys, that caused the prison to tumble to the earth. Yeah, yeah let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, I forgot where that was. Somewhere in the book of Alma, I think. Uh, they were captured, and they stood by and watched women, children, and old people murdered, thrown into a furnace, and burned alive. And Amulek's going, Alma, don't you think we should use our Jedi powers? And Alma's going, better save and reserve so we can affect our own escape. Besides, they're heaven-bound. A little suffering, a little screaming and sizzling, and it's all gravy after that. Yeah. Yeah, great heroes. Great examples there. Yeah, they did crash the prison down all around them and walk down and skate, but... First, they, they watched women, children, and old people suffer and die, and they did nothing. And then they showed that they could have. <sighs> Seem to recall that section pissed me off a bit. Still does. 
14. Behold, it was by, wait, it was the faith of Nephi and Lehi that wrought the change upon the Lamanites, that they were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Ooh. 15. Behold, it was the faith of Ammon and his brethren which wrought so great a miracle among the Lamanites. 16. Yea, and even all they who wrought miracles wrought them by faith. Even those who were before Christ, and also those who were after. Let's not mention those during, huh? Because no one was paying attention to them. 17. And it was by faith that the three disciples obtained a promise that they should not taste of death. The three tarries. And they obtained not the promise till after their faith. See, Moroni is really having a tough time staying on track. He hasn't even finished the Jaredite story, and he's already on a tangent about this. <sighs> That's fine. And they obtained not the promise until after their faith. And then they became immune to dying. Eighteen. And neither at any time hath any wrought miracles until after their faith. Wherefore they first believed in the Son of God. Four. No, wait, Apollo. Which one was it? Krishna. Uh, no. Uh, give me some time. It'll come back to me. I'm sure. I hear it all the time. Nineteen. And there were many whose faith was so exceeding strong, even before Christ came, who could not be kept from with, within the veil. They poked through the veil and looked out into the wonders beyond, over the rainbow and all that shit, but truly saw with their eyes the things which they beheld with an eye of faith. And they were glad. <laughs> Twenty. And behold, we have seen in this record that one of these was the brother of Jared, the nameless one. He doesn't need a name. He has a brother with a name. <laughs> That's like not having an address and going, well, I'm next door to this address on the right side. Or the left, I don't know. Okay. The brother of Jared. For so great was his faith, he didn't need a name. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that God put forth his finger, and he could not hide it from the sight of, of the brother Jared. So there's something he couldn't do, huh? Wow. Because of his word, which he had spoken unto him, which word he had obtained by faith. That's believing in shit without evidence. 21. And after the brother of Jared had behold, beheld the finger of the Lord, because of the promise which the brother of Jared had obtained by faith, the Lord could not withhold anything from his sight. Wherefore, he showed him all things, for he could no longer be kept without the veil. 22. And... It is by faith that my fathers have obtained the promise that these things should come unto their brethren through the Gentiles. Therefore, the Lord hath recommended me, yea, even Jesus Christ. Wow, that's an endorsement. 23. Although there's a guy named Jesus who told me I was cool. Does that count? For anything? Uh, okay. 
23. And I said unto the Lord, The Gentiles will mock at these things because of our weakness in writing. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm almost done. For the Lord hath made us mighty in word by faith, but thou hast not made us mighty in writing. Practice. Try that. <laughs> For thou hast made all this people that they should speak much because of the Holy Ghost, which thou hast given them. 24. And thou hast made us that we could write but little because of the awkwardness of our hands. Excuses, excuses. Behold, thou hast not made us mighty in writing like unto the brother of Jared. For thou madest him that the things which he wrote were mighty, even as thou art. <laughs> unto the overpowering of man to read them. Okay. 25. Thou hast all thou hast also made our Ooh, this is a long one. words powerful and great, even that we cannot write them. Wherefore, when we write we behold our weakness and stumble because of the placing of our words. For I fear lest the Gentiles shall mock at our words. Mostly just the padded word count. That's what I find the most amusing. And also the rest. <laughs> but especially the padding. Okay. 26. But I'm, I'm a Gentile as far as I know, completely. I don't know, though. I mean, Scottish, that's Gentile, right? Uh, all right. 26. And what I had said to the Lord spake unto me, saying, Fools mock, but they shall mourn. Laugh now, cry later, biatch. And my grace is sufficient for the meek, because they're punks anyway, and they'll take what I give them. That... They shall take no advantage of your weakness. 27. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in it, but you're already making them humble by giving them weakness, so. <sighs> yeah. He made them weak, and then he turns around and says, But if you'll be weak for me, you made us weak because of you. Because you gave us weakness. Thanks. What a nice guy. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, I will make weak things become strong unto them. Okay. 28. Behold, I will show unto the Gentiles their weakness, and I will show unto them that faith, hope, and charity bringeth unto me. The fountain of all righteousness. 29. And I, Moroni, having heard these words, was comforted. It's all about comforting, isn't it? And he said, and said, excuse me, was comforted and said, O Lord, thy righteousness, wait, th thy righteous will be done. That's what it says. O Lord, thy righteous will be done. For I know that thou workest unto the children of men according to their faith. 30. For the brother of Jared, he doesn't know his name either. 
Is it a secret or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, the brother of Jared said unto the mountain, Zarin. The mountain at least had a name. Zarin. Remove. And it was removed. Yeah, didn't they say that you could move a mountain to Muhammad if he won't go to it or something like that? Or, and JC said a mustard seed of faith will like tip a mountain over or whatever. And people begging mountains to hide him by falling on him. But the brother of Jared, the nameless wonder, just said to the Mount Zared, remove, and it just gone. Except I don't remember that in this book. And I think it didn't happen. They say faith can move mountains, and nobody's moving any mountains. Those Al-Qaeda people could be knocking mountains on us like crazy with their faith if it worked. They wouldn't even need Stinger missiles and underwear bombs. Okay. I lost my place, but it was worth it. All right. Uh, there it is. Mountain Zarin. Remove, and it was removed. And if he had not had faith, it would not have moved the mountain Zaren, <laughs> wherefore thou workest after men, have faith. 31. For thus didst thou manifest thyself unto the disciples, for after they had faith and did speak in thy name, thou didst show thyself unto them in great power. Much repetition there. Pretty tell. And I also remember that thou hast said that thou hast prepared a house for man, a house. Yea, even among the mansions of my father. Are we talking about heaven? What do we need buildings for in heaven? Why do we need streets, made, even if they're made of gold? What's next? Uh, diamond plumbing? Uh, I guess we'll have gravity and all that. Hey, mansions of thy father, in which man might have a more excellent hope. Wherefore, man must hope, or he cannot receive an inheritance in the place which thou hast prepared. That magic place. 33. And again, I remember that thou hast, hast said that thou hast loved the world, even unto the laying down of thy life for the world, that thou mightest take it up again to prepare a place for the children of men. Yeah, temporary death. What a bitch. 34. And now, I know that this love, which thou hast had for the children of men, is charity. Wherefore, except men shall have charity, they cannot, cannot inherit that place which thou hast prepared in the mansions of thy father. 35. Wherefore I know that by this thing which thou hast said, that if the Gentiles have not charity because of our weakness, that thou wilt prove them and take away their talent. That's not nice. Yea, even that which they have received, and give unto them who shall have more abundantly. How do you like that? 36. And it came to pass, and it's about fucking time. God damn. Chapter's almost over. Oh. That I prayed unto the Lord that he would give unto the Gentiles grace. 
that they might have charity. 37. And it came to pass... The Lord said unto me, If they have not charity, it matter, mattereth not unto you, wait, unto thee. Thou hast been faithful, wherefore thy garment shall be made clean. They must have a laundromat in heaven or something. They're really fixated about white laundry. Yeah, no stains. And because thou hast seen thy weakness, thou shalt be made strong, even unto the sitting down in the place which I have prepared in the mansions of my father. See, they'll have chairs. Wow. 38. And now I. I hate that, man. Be a belch or don't. Somewhere in the middle. For now I, Moroni, bid farewell unto the Gentiles, <coughs> yea, and also unto my brethren, whom I love, until we shall meet before the judgment seat of Christ where all men shall know that my garments are not spotted with your blood. 39. And then shall ye know that I have seen Jesus, and that he hath talked with me face to face, and that he told me in plain humility even as a man telleth another in mine own language concerning these things. 40. And also a few have I written because of my weakness in writing. Looking forward to the book of Moroni. Is that crappy of a writer? All right. 41. And now... I would commend you to seek this, this Jesus, of whom the prophets and apostles have written, that the grace of God the Father, and also the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, which beareth record of them, may be and abide in you forever. Amen. And that's it for 12. And that wasn't very good. He did, I wanted to hear about the Jaredites. He went off on this weird little loopity loop of a tangent, trying to come up with his own knockoff of Hebrews 11. I think I didn't notice that. Let me know what you noticed. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having.